Hello viewers. Yeah, today I'm going to show you a uh, CPL signal I bought uh, quite a while ago actually, yeah, it was a few months ago. I uh, just recently got a board built for it and right now is under testing stage. So I'd like to demonstrate the operation of the board and all the uh, aspects for this particular uh, custom built uh, CPL bracketed signal that I picked up off of eBay. So I'll give you a little look at the driver board for it. As you can see there's all the signal wiring for all the LEDs and the connection to the board. And there's the cluster board right there of all the driver circuitry. This is just the signal driver itself. This has nothing to do with uh, the interlocking logic or anything like that. This is just the driver board. So let's actually get a better view, overview of the board here. A quick overview, here's the power connection. 5 volts, all, all my signal boards that I built uh, run off of 5 volts DC. And here are the individual uh, output, signal light outputs, at red, yellow, green, lunar, and we also have two outputs for the marker lights, and then our common connection, or our return, for all the uh, lights. And over on this side we've got our inputs. Uh, these three here are one side or one head, uh, yellow in, lunar in, and detect. And then these two in the middle here are the detection for the marker lights. So grounding these inputs here will make the marker lights go dark. Whereas grounding any one of these inputs, depending on whether it's yellow, lunar, or red, will give you your different aspects. And on this board, um, a yellow, a yellow overrides a green, a lunar will override a yellow or a green, and then red, of course, overrides everything. So these connections here are a special jumper connection to either make the green aspect flash or remain steady. Uh, there is a built-in flasher on this board that allows the green aspect to flash or be steady. Uh, doing some research on CPL aspects, a flashing green with no marker light would be like a slow clear. So there will be a uh, situation on the uh, part of the layout that this signal is going to be installed at, which I'll show you later, where I will need a steady green and a flashing green depending on how the switches and block detectors are set up. So. So there's an overview of the board. I'll give you a little overview of the test setup I got here. So coming from these inputs, I have my Atlas selector and connector switches that I'm using to simulate the inputs. Uh, this one here, these two switches are actually wired into those very uh, flash inputs. So actually if you short out the, uh, the two connections between uh, the connector here, that'll actually give you a steady green. Uh, if you break the connection, it uh, will flash on you. So I've got two wires running up to those so I can simulate a steady or flashing green. And then your four switches, uh, one for your marker light, red, lunar, and yellow. And of course, if every switch is off, you'll get a green or and a marker light. So four switches for one signal head and then the four switches for the other signal head. So that's an overview of the test setup. Now let's do some demonstration of the actual signal board itself. And to do that, set up the tripod. I'm going to kill the fluorescent light right above here, give you a little bit of a better view That light is kind of bright. So hopefully that'll be a little bit of an easier, give a little bit of an easier view. So let's go ahead and 
do the left hand signal first. So well, we'll start off with the most favorable aspect that any locomotive engineer would want to see and that would be your clear. So for a CPL that would be a marker light and a green, vertical green lights. Yep. Wrong signal. Let's do the left signal first. There we go. So two vertical greens and a marker light overhead indicates a clear or proceed indication. Now let's do an approach. So a diagonal yellow with a marker light overhead would be an approach aspect. And to do a lunar, we need to activate the input on the marker light and uh, the lunar input and that gives you a lunar aspect or restricting and then of course the final input would give you a red so we just did the basic clear approach restricting and stop for that particular signal now let's do a slow clear and a slow approach and a stop Let's see. Okay. Make that a flashing green. There we go. So, two vertical flashing greens it would be a slow clear. And uh, note also, too, that there is no, the marker light here is dark. So, anytime you have a slow aspect, the marker light will be dark. And that goes the same with a slow approach just a uh, diagonal yellow with the dark marker light and then of course you get your lunar again and your stop so let's go to the right hand signal this time and we'll we'll cycle through the aspects again we'll we'll give it a clear two vertical greens with a marker light lit over top Let's see an approach so diagonal yellows with a marker light overhead and then let's do a restricting so we're gonna uh, deactivate the marker light and flip it over to a restricting Move the camera over so you can see that just a little bit and then of course a stop so now let's do the slow aspects so there you have it two vertical greens flashing gives you a slow clear and the same thing like with the other signal um, diagonal yellow with no marker light overhead would be a slow approach and then you're restricting again of course and your stop so really not much to it this particular signal uh, just has the one set of marker lights so there's really not very many aspects that can be created um, but based on the track arrangement where this will be installed that it's enough to do how I want to wire it up so let's take a look at the uh, track arrangement turn the light back on and I'll grab the camera and over to the track arrangement now here is the upper level this signal will be installed in the upper level track work the track in question is going to be this interlocking here and as you can see I've got the two mains main one and main two or as I sometimes call them inside main outside main for short uh, I have a crossover using two Atlas number six turnouts so comparable to a real-life crossover it's about a slow speed crossover now I also have the one leg of the Y that comes around and this in turn goes into uh, across one of my many lift open bridges and into an intermodal yard and as we follow that back we also have going from the crossover here we have another turnout here that goes into a siding but we also have a diamond that crosses both mains 
Now on this would actually be the other leg of the Y coming around to the inner model yard. So a bit of a bit of a complex arrangement for an interlocking, but not too bad. Uh, there will be a set of signals here, but I will cover those later on. Um, so that's the arrangement that those signals are going to be guarding. Obviously any train going through that crossover is going to get the slow, the slow clear or slow approach. And anything going from the main off into either the siding on the right there, so over here, or going around this Y here, is it going to get a restricting indication? Or anything on the inside or main two that's going to cross over and go into the siding at the same time will get a restricting. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, interlocking logic planning I have to do quite uh, yet, but. I can uh, at least get the signals installed and lit up. So once I do that, I will post another video of them in operation. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little introduction to the first and only CPL installation on my layout. And feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for viewing. Have a good one.